Hey everyone, it's Bass Junkie transmitting from Hamburg, Germany, back with a new video. And well, yesterday I uh, saw a video by Mr. James Buttery, also like a longtime member of the vinyl community, where he was showing as a threat response to someone else's video. Don't ask me who the initial like threat starter was, but uh, he was showing like 10 records uh, of bands or 10 albums of bands he's actually seen live. And I thought I could like follow up with a threat response. And within 20 minutes, I pulled out like 40 uh, records of bands I've seen live and bands and projects, but uh, no worry, this will not be like a two hours video, but I s decided to split this in like 10 record sections. And uh, we're starting with Client, a British band uh, which was kind of popular throughout the Electro Clash hype, like in the early 2000s. Uh, seen them live at Echo Chamber uh, in Hamburg, uh, a concert which was not well packed actually. It was signed to Toast Hawaii, uh, which is like a sub label of Mute Records, and that was obviously, as far as I remember, run by Andy Fletcher of Deepesh Mode fame. Uh, very good stuff, very poppy, had some like big hit singles, and after the concert, I was able to, to have a chat with Kate Holmes, Clay, and A, the darker haired girl of uh, the band, and we stayed in touch for like a few emails actually because I wanted to uh, get a DJ mix from them for my former radio show, the Nachtschwestern, but this didn't happen. But uh, yeah, I saw Client Live and as far as I remember, I guess Andy Fletcher was actually present. I'm not too sure, but I remember, because it was 15 years ago, I was 16, I remember a guy that resembled him properly. So he was at the show as well. And uh, talking radio last night, uh, I was supposed to have a radio show at the online radio station Neu Jersey Radio, which is based in Rutherford, near like across the Hudson River, straight like a few miles from Manhattan. And they, I approached them like for doing a one-off mix, guest mix for the the small online station. But they were like, okay, let's get into this big time, and um, we're gonna get you a radio show like bi-weekly and. Uh, Yesterday, the first stream, the first mix was supposed to be aired from like 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 8 p.m. And uh, obviously the guy wasn't at home and forgot to start the stream. So uh, there was no no mix of mine aired on the station and I'm pretty pissed kind of. And I wonder like why are like all the people in the music industry or like a lot of people in the music industry that unreliable and turn out to be like just guessing about things and not doing things appropriately. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to work with them. They will find, uh, they told me they want to find out a like proper streaming solution so they can put my mixes on the server and stream them in time. But I'm curious if this will ever happen. So, but this is just a side note because I talked about radio. The next one, Blood Red Shoes. Second album here, uh, I saw them at the Molotov in Hamburg. There is like actually no big words to uh, to lose about them. Uh, I saw them at the last big, uh, last small club show they did in Hamburg. It's an indie band. Uh, I was associated with a Molotov club at, in back in the days, around like I don't know 2005, 2006 maybe, because I was DJing there in their mini bar. This was like a bar, like a very small bar, and the club was down in the in the basement and. Uh, those two locations belonged together kind of and were bound and so I saw a lot of concerts and had like always free entry and I saw Blood Red Shoes alongside the Wombats in like a 350 capacity um, venue and it turned out me and my former girlfriend were there and it turned out they forgot the guest list so they squeezed more people in and like we were like sitting with our feet on on the stage actually because it was so packed and so crowded but this was around the first album, second album, Don't Ask is a big hit, good stuff. Next one is like kind of business uh, related thing, um, more or less uh, Null and Void. His first album, Cryo Sleep, which um, I saw, or who I saw live um, playing at the Ripperbahn Festival last year, Null and Void is Kurt Wuenala. And he has released this album on a label I was working for like uh, for quite a while and uh, he's actually also sharing a studio 
with Dave Gahan of Depeche Mode in New York and it has been like involved in Depeche Mode productions and in like productions by Dave Gahan solo as well. So, uh, and now uh, he has released an album project. Uh, I met him when he was DJing alongside Kaspar Pjörke at the Golden Poodle Club years ago when I was still working at the label and I saw him play later live musically. It's more like electro meets a little bit of synth pop stuff. Uh, so it's a project slash band, one guy on stage. The vocals come from uh, from tracks on the laptop mostly, but uh, I saw him live and we are in touch ever since, like sporadically via Instagram and uh, when he's in Hamburg. Um, actually, we talk kind of or meet up, like, I don't know if he's playing for Rapper One Festival again this year, but I hope to see him again soon. So. Um, Next one, Bondage Fairies. They are from Sweden, as far as I remember. Um, indie band, uh, or more like indie Nintendo Core, 8-bit lo-fi stuff. I saw them a few times, uh, the last time at the Molotov, the old Molotov Club in Hamburg. They had a big hit like called He-Man, and they were like associated with the Audio Lead label. Not directly, but indirectly. Uh, and I worked for the Audio Lit label, which is like a big electro punk uh, indie electro label. Or used to be, now they drifted into other musical directions, but at the time they were like big time. So I met, uh, I saw them when I was there uh, with the guys from Audio Lead back in the day. So um, yeah, good stuff. Bondage Fairies. Highly recommend it if you like bleepy, um, bleepy indie, like lo-fi computer game sounds as well and uh, they're very fun to watch on stage with all the mask stuff so uh, get this another one that was associated with audio lead the dance inc i've seen them live uh, a few times i was on tour with them actually as well like as a tour dj for like one or two shows uh disbanded um after audio lead wasn't um willing or able to release their second album i guess and one part of the Dance Inc, uh, which were like a synth pop band from Hamburg, uh, is actually the guy known as Heinbach now, who is running a big successful um, YouTube channel for uh, music production with like test equipment and like also modular synth stuff. And uh, Heinbach was obviously the guy who produced a lot of stuff in the in the background. And um, yeah, we're still friends. We hang out. Although uh, back in the days when they were about to release the second album or like played us the demo, I was like working at Audio Loot back in the day. They went with a with a band with the Danzig into a direction that wasn't compatible with what the label released at the time. We didn't see and I didn't see a chance necessarily that they're going to be successful and I didn't saw a single. So uh, we were like, uh, or the label was like, no, we unfortunately cannot do the record because it wouldn't like resonate with with the um, audience they had at the time but i really love this as a synth pop album and if you like synth pop from germany especially get this it's good still maybe you find it anywhere next one quick and dirty gestern an album by sonnenbrand and uh friends of mine actually uh, from hamburg also, uh, Jojo Brand, one half of Sonnenbrand, is uh, also founding member of, member of the Convent, which is like a post-punk indie band, like from back in the day, they have like 30 plus years in the business. And he's also the one uh, with whom I produced the remix for No More. So he's Herr Brand of No More. And uh, actually, I set up a show for Sonnenbrand uh, when we did the Plutonium Pogo parties at the Molotov in Hamburg and they're like German vocals, like synth wave, minimal wave with like a tongue in cheek twist and uh, very nice. So I saw him live with Sonnenbrand at the Molotov and also at the Hafen Klang Goldener Salon alongside No More. So and we're like hang out occasionally and we do the Beta Zafal parties together. So another band from Germany you might not have heard of. Next one. Great album, Atari Teenage Riot, The Future of War. Big fan of the uh, digital hardcore label in general, and I saw Atari Teenage Riot playing live a few times, uh, I guess back in 94 or 95 at a, at a rave actually, which was set up by the Camel Tobacco brand. This was the first time 
Then in 97 or 98, I saw them at the Logo in Hamburg when this, around the time when this album came out. And I went there with Doc Jones of the Crystal Apes. And I saw them live at the Grünspan in Hamburg uh, eight years ago, ten years ago, maybe. But this last show, uh, show sucked. But uh, back in the days, Atari Teenage Riot in the 90s, still a main staple on in terms of stage, pre stage presence and like musical brutality. So uh, more breakcore, hardcore, digital hardcore stuff, in your face, brutal. You get me, I guess. And yep, this is a classic, Portishead Dummy, nothing to say about the album, fabulous trip-hop band. I saw them at uh, in Hamburg, live open air, uh, at I Stadtpark? Yeah, at the, the Stadtpark open air stage and uh, actually I saved the concert kind of when I saw them because uh, when I was hanging out there and I was like there for press reasons, obviously, to take pictures and stuff in the late 90s. And um, I was standing like at the front row uh, where the front row press stuff. And there were like two young, funny, cute lesbian girls standing next to me with like colored hair and stuff. And they were all like going Glastonbury, Glastonbury. And uh, Beth actually came as drunk as she was, as she used to be in concerts, uh, came next to the to the stage, uh, like to the to the very edge of the stage, and like uh, to to greet the girls actually who were like going Glastonbury and stuff. And uh, she fell off stage, and she she fell directly into my arms, and I helped her like to get on stage again. So uh, I kind of saved a Portishead concert in Hamburg back in the day, like twenty years ago, maybe. I don't remember. And the next one, Mouse on Mars. This is an old album, actually, Auto D. Tucker from the 90s. This is a great band and was like a great band and also like a musical favorite of mine for years. So I saw them at the Logo Hamburg live in 94 or 95, actually, for the first time. Um, then I saw them at the Mojo Club in Hamburg. Years later, many, many years later, and then I saw also Black Manual, the solo project of Jan Werner, Jan Sank Werner of Mars on Mars at the CTM uh, in Berlin, like a few years ago, where I was invited by his manager, but this is a different story. So um, yeah, I saw Mars on Mars live several times. And the last one, the final one, the 10th one, is a special one. It's a white label. and. Uh, this is spherical and as you can see it's been released on my own label intro recordings back in 99 or 2000 and it's a hamburg based band it was a hamburg based band trip hop live trip hop live drum and bass a whole thing with like synth and live drummer and uh, a great singer and uh, yeah i saw them like a few times and uh, I was really, really up for it and fascinated by them. I saw them 10 times maybe or something like that. And I became friends with their manager uh, actually. And at the time they had no label and uh, her, the manager was actually uh, like a guy who's been in the music industry for ages and used to do tour managing for Guns N' Roses and stuff and had like postcards by Axl Rose on his, uh, on his wall. And uh, I was pretty young. I was like about 22 at the time or something like that, 21. Learned a lot from that guy. And um, they were also in a movie that was called Kurz und Schmerzlos. They were used in the, uh, in the soundtrack. And this film was made by Fatih Akin, who is now like an internationally renowned uh, director and stuff. And uh, yeah, a movie producer. And they had like a thing at the soundtrack and they had only like a few cassette releases out, like self-produced cassette stuff. And uh, they were looking for a label and I had one and uh, we got to know the guys and we became friends kind of. And uh, this resulted in the release of a trip hop, live trip hop, live drum and bass band on my label like about 20 years ago now. And uh, yeah, I've seen them live multiple times with multiple friends and 
Yeah, the record is sold out for years and the band is still existing, but only one guy, the former bass player, is still involved and all. And the, the great um, vocalist Christina Bischoff, who actually kind of lives around the corner from me, and we run it into each other like uh, at the bus, kind of, um, every few months or so. Um, she went and uh, became involved in radio and uh, the other members like disappeared kind of, but uh, now Spherical is more into like soul, big orchestral arrangements and future soul and new, new funk and stuff. But back in the day they were like, uh, yeah, a big, a big thing in the trip hop scene. Were invited to a Mon to the Montreux Jazz Festival actually, but they didn't go for some weird reasons. I I won't reveal right now. But this is also a band I've seen live, and this is like, yeah, ten records, ten vinyl records by ten bands I've seen live. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, prepare for like a few more videos of this kind, and if you like them, if you've seen any of the bands, let me know in the comment. Follow me on social media and. Uh, I'm going to talk to you in the next one. See you later.